you're signaling. Good morning, <laughs> and welcome to St. Gertrude's Parish this morning. Today is the 24th Sunday in Ordinary Time. The Mass parts today are from the Mass of St. Anne, found in the white inserts in your Breaking Bread hymnal. hymnal. The music compositions for today's live stream Mass are used with permission under license A728690. Please rise and greet those around you and join in our opening hymn. Lift up your hearts to the Lord, number 568. Number 568. Good morning. Good morning. Just when you thought it was safe to come back to church, I'm here. <laughs> I want to thank all of you for your prayers and thoughts. Uh, it's been a great recovery, and I know it's because of your prayers and thoughts, so thank you. So we begin as we begin all good things. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And may the grace and peace of the Lord be with all of you. Let us bless the Lord who made heaven and earth, who pardons our sins and crowns us with compassion. Lord Jesus, you are without sin. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are God's anointed Son. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Lord of the dead and the living. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us all to life everlasting. Amen. And we join with the angels as we sing. Oh, 
Let us pray. Look upon us, O God, creator and ruler of all things, and that we may feel the working of your mercy. Grant that we may serve you with all our hearts. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Sirach. Wrath and anger are hateful things, yet the sinner hugs them tight. The vengeful will suffer the Lord's vengeance, for he remembers their sin in detail. Forgive your neighbor's injustice. Then, when you pray, your own sins will be forgiven. Could anyone nourish anger against another and expect healing from the Lord? Could anyone refuse mercy to another like himself? Can he seek pardon for his own sins? If one who is but flesh cherishes wrath, who will forgive his sins? Remember your last days. Set enmity aside. Remember death and decay and cease from sin. Think of the commandments. Hate not your neighbor. Remember the Most High's covenant and overlook his faults. The word of the Lord. Sorry, I forgot the children's liturgy of the word. So if all those children who will be going to children of the word would please come forward. I goofed again. You guys got to stand up and say, hey, what about us? Anyone else? Have you ever had to say you're sorry to someone? And then you have to forgive them, right? Because they did. Well, that's what you're going to learn today about, more about how God forgives us and wants us to forgive others. Go in God's peace.
A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, none of us lives for oneself, and no one dies for oneself. For if we live, we live for the Lord. And if we die, we die for the Lord. So then, whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. For this is why Christ died and came to life, that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Peter approached Jesus and he asked him, Lord, if my brother sins against me, how often must I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus answered, I say to you, not seven times, but seventy-seven times. That is why the kingdom of heaven may be likened to a king who decided to settle accounts with his servants. When he began the accounting, a debtor who was brought before him who owed him a huge amount, since he had no way of paying it back, his master ordered him to be sold, along with his wife and his children and all of his property in payment of the debt. At that, the servant fell down. He did him homage, and he said, Be patient with me, and I will pay you back in full. <clears throat> Moved with compassion, the master of that servant let him go and forgave him of the loan. When the servant had left, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a much smaller amount. He seized him, and he started to choke him, demanding, pay back what you owe. Falling to his knees, his fellow servant begged him, be patient with me and I will pay you back. But he refused. Instead, he had the fellow servant put in prison until he had paid back the debt. Now when his fellow servants saw what had happened, they were deeply disturbed and went to their master and reported the whole affair. His master summoned him, and he said to him, You wicked servant, I forgave your entire debt, but you begged me not. Should you not have had the same pity on your fellow servant as I pitied on you? Then in anger, the master handed him over to the torturer until he should pay back the whole debt. So will my heavenly Father do to you, unless each of you forgives your brother or your sister, me, unless each of you forgive your brother and sister from your heart. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise 
last Monday was 9-11. It was the 22nd anniversary of the terrible event that happened to the World Trade Building and to our country. I bring it up for a lot of reasons. One is too often to, we just forget things and we just pass over it. We go on to something else and we forget about the heroic, courageous things that people did for one another. They forget about how we gathered and united as one people. The second reading, a reason is what our gospel commands us to do today, and that is to forgive those who hurt us. Last Sunday and Monday, I watched, I think, every interview and public event and iPod or pod commemorating this terrible event. But one of the things I never heard in any of them was the word forgiveness. I've heard how we honor the dead, protect our country, preserving the American lifestyle, and a few other things that were not worth even discussing. But no one said forgiveness or even gave a hint of or suggested it. Have we forgiven? There is one voice that calls us to forgiveness, and that's Jesus. And this teaching of Jesus to forgive one another, especially our enemy, is probably the hardest teaching of Jesus that we all have to abide by, to forgive. Because it's our human inclination not to forgive, and it's so unpopular that we wouldn't even think of suggesting of forgiving someone. I think it's funny because every politician, whether they're religious or not, say at the end of every one of their speeches, they say, God bless America. But not one of them would ever think of even citing or hinting about forgiveness because they know that that would be the end of their political career. But we're gathered here this morning not as politicians. We're gathered here this morning as disciples in Christ. And whether it's 9-11, whether it's a hurt from a divorce, or a friend who's betrayed us, or someone who's laughed at us or spread gossip about us, whatever the hurt we, have, we are carrying, Jesus calls us, commands us to forgive. But we have to be clear about what forgiveness is and what it's not. Forgiveness doesn't mean that you just all of a sudden very naively go and trust someone else because they can hurt you again in the future. And you have to take steps to protect yourself and prevent any further hurt. But what forgiveness is, is in our parable today. And it gives us the ingredient that we need to be able to forgive. Because in our parable today, we're called to forgive, and it calls us first to focus. Focus on all of the blessings that you have. It calls you to focus on all of the people who love and support you. It calls you to recognize all the good things in your life and how blessed you truly are. And then you'll be able to begin to move forward to forgiveness when you come from that groundwork of how much God and your family and friends around you are there for you and to help you. You will find it a little bit easier I'm not saying it's going to be perfect or very easy, but it, you'll find it a little bit easier when you recognize how blessed you are and how you want to forgive them and only wish that they could be so blessed as you are. The question is, are you ready to forgive? Please stand.
and together let us profess our faith in the God in whom we love. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us, salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven and has seated the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess the baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. Amen. Mindful of the mercies we have received, we ask God's mercy on the church and on the world. For a new freedom among enemies, may forgiveness, remedy, hatred, and brashness, may God's way become our way as we learn to reconcile our relationship. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a new dedication toward people facing natural disasters, may we collect our resources from around the world to support people suffering from loss and homelessness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a new understanding of our Earth's resources, may we reconcile... For a new understanding of our Earth's resources, may we reconcile for our selfish rays as we explore our resources in future. May our entitlement be transformed into service for people in need of housing, water, and health. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our fragile elderly, may we work for adequate health care, for sufficient food and shelter. May we not forget the work and dedication of people who have served us in the past. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For our loved ones who have died, may our beloved now find themselves basking in the beauty of the face of Jesus Christ, especially for our mass intentions. Betty and Jack Taylor, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of the living and the dead, you call believers to love one another. Do not hold our sins against us, but hear the prayers we offer in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our offertory song. Um, is Hosea number 665 in Breaking Bread number 665 
my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father the Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and the glory of God's name for our good and good of all his holy church. Look with favor on our supplications, O Lord, and in your kindness accept these, your servants' offerings, that what each has offered to the honor of your name may serve the salvation of all. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you have laid the foundation to the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed us in your image and set humanity over the whole world and all of its wonders to rule in your name over all that you've made and forever to praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks, he broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. 
Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Blaise, our Bishop, with all the religious, the clergy, and your entire people. Remember also our sisters and our brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. And all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. Ignatius, St. Jerome, St. Gertrude, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coherent to eternal life, may praise and glorify with your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom of power and glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of Christ be with all of you. Amen. Let's share a sign of peace and love with one another. God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be you.
Our communion hymn is Come to the Water and Breaking Bread, number 619.
We have just a few parish announcements. I'd like to invite the ushers to please come forward to take the second collection today, which is for the seminary. This collection is to support the training and education of those studying for the priesthood. Souls of the parish, today's the day to do it, to sign up for it. Our parish walk run on October the 7th. Also, you can, those forms are in the back of the church. Also, in the back of the church, we have pledge forms and envelopes for those who would like to sponsor Father Mike Bradley, who will be doing his 50th marathon, it's a Chicago marathon this year. All sponsored donations will go to the Heart to Heart Ministry. This Thursday, September the 21st, at 7 p.m., Kathy Osberger, a parishioner here, will be presenting her book, I Surrender. It's her memoirs of Chile's dicta dictatorship during the reign of P Pinochet. Books are available at the back of the church for $20. Please join us on Thursday evening for a very personal reflection. Youth group. Next Saturday, we'll be going to Great America, the Haunt Fest. Please see the flyers at the back of the church or in the bulletin for more information. That's next Saturday that they'll be going. Let us stand and pray. May the workings, workings of this heavenly gift, O Lord, we pray, take possession of our minds and our bodies so that its effect, so that its effect and not our own desires may always prevail in us through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. If together we could say a Hail Mary for a true peace in this world. Hail Mary, Amen. full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and the hour of our death. Amen. Our Lady of Peace, pray for us. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless us all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us bring Christ's peace to this world. Thanks be to God. Have a great week. Our closing hymn is City of God, number 390 in your Breaking Bread.